Now, as I say, 7.42, well, every year the NZ Gardener magazine um, goes around the country and selects their top New Zealand gardeners. And there will be an overall um, uh, New Zealand Gardener of the Year, but they have the regional finalists. And the Auckland regional finalists is rather special. Di Celia's um, has set up a uh, community garden at her local church, but has now extended that beyond that and is now um, is providing fruit uh, fallen fruit from people's trees around their neighbourhood um, to other people who may be in need. And Di joins us on the show this morning. Morning to you, Di. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Now, you, uh, you set up this um, community garden a wee while back, is that right? Yes, it was um, in about a year ago, about August last year, we started with the community garden, yes. So there was a bit of space around the church um, grounds? Yes, the church used to be on an old um, motel site, and so there's quite a bit of land around the um, property. And um, I had a very small garden. I kept thinking, oh, I'd love to have lots of fruit trees. Yeah. And then the one day at church, I thought, oh, actually, the church has got lots of land. Why don't we make that useful? And this is in Browns Bay, isn't it? It's in Myrangi Bay, the church. Right, okay. What was the soil like there? So the what, soil? Yeah. Um, normal Auckland soil, which is very full of clay, mm. <laughs> which is not good. So we had to um, get loads of soil in, and we've made raised garden beds. So okay, so you... Needed to improve everything first. Yes, definitely. We had to do big uh, working bees. We got quite a few, you know, lots of volunteers involved in building the the beds and um, filling it up with soil and then doing the planting. And so were there a lot of people involved in this? Oh, yeah, heaps of people. Not, you know, not everybody came every time, but we'd send out lots of emails and... um, Particularly when we did the building, we used to have quite a lot of the men involved. Some whole families would come with their little kids and they'd, you know dig the holes and fill it with soil, and it was very, very sweet, yeah. So the idea of a community, car- community garden is good, but how does it actually work? I mean, who gets the produce and who does all the work? How does that happen? Well, I think every community garden works differently, and um, what started me off on that particular idea was the 2010 January edition of New Zealand Gardener had a challenge to people to start a community garden, so that really got me you know, going with that, and it gave lots of ideas about how to get going and how you, what, what you would do with it. We, the purpose that we set out for at that particular garden was for people in the community, mostly the church community, because it was on sort of enclosed private land. Yeah. Um, we started off with, with the, the community there getting involved, uh, growing the produce, and the purpose was to supply food, fresh food to the food bank that the church has. Oh, okay. Um, it was also for the people that got involved to take home produce for themselves. It was tr- to encourage people to grow, learn to grow their own produce. Can, they could take some home and then also, as I said, to provide to the food bank. Right. And what kinds of um, fresh produce are we talking about? We had um, lots of different lettuce, um, celery, lots of different herbs, strawberries, um, capsicum, tomatoes, oh, cabbages, le- yeah. Broccoli, spinach, silver beet. <laughs> now, one thing I know with um, with my garden is that you know you you can plant all this stuff, but yeah, you know, it, it just doesn't grow by itself, and um, and it, it often needs protection from pests, particularly here in Auckland. There's all kinds of things that'll just munch the way through the garden and and just and destroy the whole lot. So, who takes overall responsibility of that kind of stuff? Well, at the community garden, initially, I took the responsibility of of um, or doing all the organising. Um, we there was our church also has um, a, a mental health outpatient facility called Equip, and they've got lots of staff who overlook the garden. So they took a lot of responsibility in helping water every day. Yeah, we had watering schedules, and because it was very good soil to start with, we didn't have too much of a problem with pests. We tried to go totally organic. Yeah, but there were some times where we did need snail bait or other you know other different um, like there is dust on the. Um, cabbages and things right but um we had every week on a saturday we had a specific time where people could come and help okay and um we sort of opened the gates and whoever arrived arrived and and would look after it so it's since then it's expanded beyond the community garden to uh, fruit trees around the neighborhood yes well we we planted an orchard as well uh, of about 12 fruit trees at the time that we started the garden and after a year, I realised the trees were going to take a really long mm. time before they were laden well, you, with fruit. You can't pick and them in the first year, can you? No, we, no. it was very sad, actually, as we saw these little buds. It was so exciting seeing yeah. all the buds growing, and then we had to pull them all off. Yeah. 
But um, so yes, so from that I, I noticed a lot of trees in the in the neighbourhood that were laden, and people didn't seem to be picking them. And I thought, wow, if if you know we're trying so hard to grow all these fruit trees, but there's lots of homes with well-established fruit trees which people are not really using the fruit for. Aren't, and, aren't they all? Aren't they all grapefruit trees? It's grapefruit trees that people just leave to <laughs> rot on the ground. Well, it's, it's not only grapefruit; it's also lemons, um, hmm. mandarins, um, tangelos, oranges. There's actually a lot. And then, of course, in the autumn, you get all the, the fijoas. Of course, yeah. So Very different popular. seasons seem to have mm. certain plants that, that are pr- quite prolific. Um, I mean, the thing is about grapefruit is we can grow beautifully in Auckland, but they don't, in the South Island, they can't grow citrus. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. You know, years ago, apparently, I think it was the Lions Club used to uh, transport citrus fruit down to the South Island. So we're quite spoilt up here. But I think And and things like lemons. I mean lemons are expensive, really. They're very expensive. No one should have to ever buy a lemon. No. <laughs> this lemon t- and there's a big it? difference between a purchased lemon and a lemon grown in your backyard. The juice you get out of the the, the home grown one is uh, you know, probably two, three, four times more. I think you're right, and I think it's probably because we leave them on the trees at home a lot longer. Mm. When they're picking them um, to sell in the shops, they have to pick them early. And, of course, the riper and uh, more sunlight that the fruit gets, the juicier they are. So how are you getting this fruit? Are you jumping fences? (laughs) Sometimes I wish I could. (laughs) (laughs) No, um, a couple of things we did right in the early days. um, The North Shore Times did an article, and that really got the whole thing going because we needed to get people to offer their trees so we needed some way to get the word out to people hey if you've got a tree you can't pick it you don't want to pick it you don't like it you can't reach the fruit whatever the reason is contact us we'll pick it for you we'll share the fruit with you Mm. we'll share the fruit with the pickers and the the majority of it goes to the food bank food banks um and we also i had some flyers printed and i got those going and a friend helped me set up a facebook page and of course, with, with the social media, with mm-hmm. Facebook, it's just been incredible how the word has got around. So much easier that way, isn't it? It is. It's yeah. been amazing. And yeah. um, so through that, people then have got in touch with us and said they've got a fruit tree, and we go and pick it. And then um, I contacted the Auckland City Mission, and they come and collect the fruit from me every Tuesday morning. Oh, awesome. And that, which makes it easier, because I work as well, so I can't go around driving around all the time delivering fruit. Well, that's right. I was wondering how you find all the time to do this stuff. Um, um, I tend to be first up in the morning in my household and yeah. last to bed. Because <laughs> you've got three young, three young kids as well? Well, they're not that young anymore. Um, I've only got two still at home. And, um, yeah, but it's still, you know, the school and the, the after-school um, sports and all of those kind of things mm. that I'm involved in. So, yeah, I tend to be pretty busy. <laughs> so is this idea being replicated anywhere else? Oh, yes. In fact, we just had a new, I call it franchise, in inverted commas, <laughs> started up in Christchurch yesterday. Oh, wow. So we've had um, Hamilton and Wellington have um, had community fruit harvesting programs going now for a couple of months as well. Yep. And a lady called Tamsin has started up one in Christchurch yesterday. Right. So it's it really has been fantastic because... Every area, you know, there's so many people contact me from all over the country and they want to start it. I've had people from the top of the North Island to the bottom of the South Island mm. contacting me and saying, what a fabulous idea, we'd love to get started. So I've shared information with them. I've sort of put a document together about how to start one in their area. But a lot of people just don't have the time to put in. Yeah. And it's through this home produce, really, that people can get what a sense of community back. Oh, it's been amazing. Mm. We had two people phoning me um, last week, both elderly, both people that have immigrated years and years ago from England and have lived here all their lives. They've got no family here because their partners have died. They've got no children. And um, and they couldn't, the one lady couldn't pick her fruit on her own because she's now used a walker. And she said, look, the fruit just goes to waste. You're welcome to come and pick it. Um and you, you you then get to know the story about these people's lives, yeah. and you can then go back and help them again with other things, clearing up their land or um, helping them in other ways. The other gentleman um, has got the most amazing garden. He's 80, and he's got so many fruit trees, and he grows so much vegetable of their own, and we learn from them. So you're learning from these people, but you can also put back into their lives, not only by picking their fruit, but by going back afterwards and visiting them and you know, doing more in their life than just visiting. So, yes, that sense of community has been amazing. I've met so many fantastic people. 
Oh, very cool. It's a wonderful story. Um, and uh, as I say, you are the finalist for Auckland. So good luck for um, the national final. Thank you very I much. I think people can, can vote, can't they? They can, go, uh, they, they can, yeah. can vote on um, New Zealand nzgardener.co.nz and they can do the voting online. Yeah. Um, but if people want to get involved in any of the community fruit harvesting, they can search for community fruit harvesting in Facebook or... If they want to email us, my email address is pickfruit at extra.co.nz. Oh, easy, yes. Thanks very much, Di. Thank you so much. And, and uh, good luck for a bumper tomato crop this year. Yes, yeah, thank you so much. Nice one. See ya. <laughs> okay, bye. Di Celius um, there, who is the Auckland finalist for the NZ Gardener of the